there should be a very massive cloud of gas around it that uh, carries uh, uh, 5 billion tons. And uh, so in the coming weeks, we should be able to see that cloud of, of gas. The best image ever captured of 3i Atlas was taken on October 2nd by the high-rise camera aboard the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. But here, where everything started to unravel, because of the U.S. government shutdown on October 1st, 2025, communication channels between NASA divisions froze. And while that shutdown was unfolding, something extraordinary was happening, the most important moment in the entire journey of Atlas. On October 29th, 2025, while Atlas was making its closest passage to our star, hidden from our view but visible to space-based solar observatories, something that should be physically impossible happened. And when I say impossible, I mean it. This wasn't unusual. This wasn't unexpected. This was a direct violation of the fundamental laws of physics. Atlas turned blue, not faintly blue, not with a tint or a hue, intensely, impossibly blue, bluer than our star itself. To understand why this is so disturbing, you have to know one basic truth of physics. Cold objects don't emit blue light. It's not a suggestion. It's not a pattern. It's a law, the law of thermodynamics. For an object that should be 20 times colder than the solar surface, to emit more blue light than our star isn't just strange. It's a direct violation of how energy interacts with matter throughout the known universe. And the data didn't come from one telescope. It came from multiple independent instruments. Stereo A's twin cameras, the HI-1 and CORE-2, both recorded the blue shift with spectroscopic precision. SOHO's LASCO C3 coronagraph confirmed it independently. Even GOES-19, a weather satellite monitoring solar activity, detected the same impossible blue glow. Different spacecraft, different teams, different instruments, all pointing to the same unexplainable truth. For this object to appear bluer than the sun is something nature should not allow, as Harvard astrophysicist Dr. Avi Loeb wrote in his analysis. For this object to appear bluer than our star defies the basic thermodynamics of how cold bodies interact with stellar radiation. Dust should scatter sunlight. Atlas's surface should appear redder, not bluer. The only possible natural explanation would require an internal energy source something generating light from within. But what source could that be? And why would it activate exactly at the moment of perihelion, when Atlas was closest to our star, hidden from Earth observation? That question led to another anomaly, one that might be even more significant. While Atlas was turning impossibly blue, it was also accelerating. David Faranoia, a navigation engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, with a PhD in mathematics from the University of Pisa, detected non-gravitational acceleration during perihelion. And this wasn't noise or rounding error. It was real, measurable thrust. Atlas was accelerating at 135 kilometers per day squared away from the sun, and another 60 kilometers per day squared sideways, perpendicular to the solar direction. These are not trivial forces. They are directional, consistent, and timed perfectly with Atlas's closest solar approach, the same moment we couldn't see it. Now, comets naturally accelerate through what's called the rocket effect. Sublimating ice creates jets that push them like small engines. But this wasn't normal. Dr. Loeb ran the math using conservation of momentum, one of the most fundamental laws in all physics. For an object of Atlas's estimated size and mass to generate that kind of thrust through normal outgassing, it would need to lose 10% of its total mass in a month. 10%, that's catastrophic mass loss, the kind that would turn a comet into a hurricane of gas and dust visible across the solar system. If that happened, we would see it. Every telescope would, a bright, massive cloud of vapor expanding behind it, unmistakable, unmissable, unavoidable. Loeb stated his prediction clearly. If the acceleration is caused by natural outgassing, we should see a dense cloud around the object when it re-emerges in November and December. I should see, because physics doesn't negotiate. If the acceleration is natural, the cloud must exist. And if we don't see that cloud when Atlas reappears, then something else, something artificial, must be producing that thrust. And just as the world was preparing to find out, 
the images vanished. This is where the story turns from scientific mystery to bureaucratic absurdity. Exactly when Atlas was performing its most critical maneuver, the moment we needed data the most, the U.S. government shutdown froze NASA's operations. October 1, 2025, funding expired, agencies went dark, non-essential personnel were furloughed, scientific operations continued in silence. And the next day, October 2, Atlas passed within 30 million kilometers of Mars, the closest Mars has ever come to Earth in recorded history. That alignment created a unique opportunity. The high-rise camera aboard the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter could capture Atlas with roughly 30-kilometer pixel resolution. Better than Hubble, better than Keck, better than any ground-based instrument. Those images were taken. Multiple researchers confirmed the targeting sequence, the geometry, the timing. High-rise was aimed, the observations were completed, and then silence. The data vanished into the black hole of bureaucracy. Weeks passed. No release, no confirmation, no denial. Dr. Avi Loeb publicly requested access. He contacted the high-rise principal investigator directly. No response. He followed up. Still nothing. The images exist. They're sitting somewhere on a NASA server, unreleased, unacknowledged. The agency hasn't confirmed their existence, and it hasn't denied it either. It said absolutely nothing, and that silence is deafening. Loeb called it terrestrial stupidity, not a cover-up, not a conspiracy, just the same human incompetence that has always stood between discovery and understanding. The universe doesn't care about government shutdowns, he said. Science doesn't pause because politicians can't agree on a budget. But the damage was done. The most detailed images of Atlas ever taken gone, buried under paperwork and silence. What followed was something even more profound a war within science itself. Loeb's findings, the impossible blue color, the unexplained acceleration, the missing images sparked a civil war in astronomy, not about aliens or conspiracies, but about how science should respond to anomalies. Physicist and broadcaster Brian Cox dismissed it all, calling Atlas a comet made of ice and rock, nothing more. He said speculation about alien origins was nonsense, sensationalism, misleading the public about how science works. Loeb's reply was cutting. Cox is like a cave dweller who finds a telephone and calls it a rock. Real scientists play on the field, guided by data, not popularity contests. His argument was simple. When you have nine documented anomalies in the same object, the odds of that happening naturally become microscopic. At some point, Science has an obligation to consider uncomfortable alternatives, even if they sound like science fiction. And right now, the best data we need is trapped in space. The JUICE probe, the Jupiter icy moon's explorer, observed Atlas from November 2nd to the 25th, perfectly positioned to see what happened after perihelion. Its instruments have already recorded everything. Cameras, spectrometers, particle sensors, all the evidence we're waiting for. The photons have already hit the detectors. The data is already saved, but JUICE is two astronomical units from Earth, sending data through a low-gain antenna at a crawl. It will take until February 2026 before we see what it saw. Three months, three months of waiting, while the truth sits in a memory bank aboard a spacecraft drifting through space. For those new to this story, here's the full picture. Atlas was discovered on July 1st, 2025, by the Atlas Detection System in Hawaii. At first, it looked like just another asteroid, until its trajectory revealed something astonishing. It wasn't from our solar system. It was from interstellar space, traveling at 61 kilometers per second, nearly double the speed of Aumuamua. Tracing its path backward, astronomers realized Atlas began its journey seven and a half billion years ago, long before the sun existed, before Earth, before life. It had traveled through interstellar space for eons, surviving cosmic radiation, magnetic storms, and encounters with other stars. But from the moment it entered our system, it defied everything we expected. Its orbit aligned almost perfectly with the ecliptic, the plane of the planets, with a precision of just five degrees. The odds of that alignment happening by chance, 0.2%. Its chemistry was even stranger. 
Atlas emitted nickel without iron, a combination found nowhere in nature except in industrial refining processes on Earth. Its dominant gas emission, carbon monoxide, the very compound produced by that same industrial process. Its color shifted through an impossible sequence, red in July, green in September, and then that blinding blue in October. One anomaly could be luck, two could be coincidence, but there are nine. Nine documented anomalies, geometric alignment, extreme velocity, industrial chemistry, carbon monoxide dominance, impossible blue color, accelerated brightening, massive nucleus early activity beyond Jupiter, and a tail that points toward the sun instead of away from it. Each one alone is strange. Together, they defy probability. As Atlas emerges from behind the sun this November, we'll finally see it again, low in the pre-dawn sky, near the constellation Virgo. If it's still blue weeks after perihelion, it means the energy source is internal and not solar. By December 19th, it will reach its closest point to Earth, 270 million kilometers. Every major telescope, Hubble, USD, and dozens on the ground will turn their eyes to it. And in February, when JUICE's data finally reaches Earth, we may have the definitive answers we've been waiting for. Until then, we wait. Maybe 3i Atlas is a strange comet, one that will challenge our models and force us to rewrite parts of astrophysics. Or maybe it's something else. Something built. Something sent. Either way, one thing is certain. Atlas is rewriting our understanding of what's possible in the cosmos, and we are witnessing it unfold in real time. So what do you think? Does the impossible blue color and unexplained acceleration change your view of what Atlas really is? Is it nature being strange or intelligence revealing itself? Subscribe and stay tuned because this story isn't over. December may give us answers or questions we're not ready for. Until next time, remember, the universe is stranger, more wonderful and possibly more inhabited than we ever imagined.